Appreciate that, and I appreciate getting the honor of being here. I said, I hope you all don't mind, but if you know I'm a joke maker a lot of times, I said, now I can honestly say I'm the best first preacher in this building. Because <laughs> I was the first. But uh, I always, you guys like this, I always tell my wife I'm the best husband she ever had because I'm the only one she ever had, and I told her not to remarry when I die. <laughs> Just... Anyhow, uh, we're going to start in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. Uh, this morning, I want to give you, let's see, yeah, i got to see the clock back there. Uh, I'll try to, uh, try to be short. I actually just preached this message at our church uh, on Wednesday night, and I was thinking about another one, but I think it's one we all need to look at. Uh, I think our society's always been been a problem. You folks that are a little bit older, I always say this, I said, when I was a young man, the world was going downhill like that, but now it's going downhill like that real fast. It's getting worse and worse constantly. There's things going on in the world today that I never would have imagined even in, uh, and, I, and I'm not making fun of the word. I feel sorry for it. And I said, I'm real excited about my grandkids. I love them, but I'm, I'm scared for them. Because, like I said, if our world's gone downhill this far, this fast uh, in this world, and, and sadly, I'll say this, a lot of times we as Christians aren't being what we're supposed to be, and we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing, and we're so, uh, we just sang that song, Count Our Blessings. We are so blessed, and we don't realize it. Even though America has problems, I still thank God I'm here in America. Amen. I'd much rather be here than, than anywhere else, and we're going to start off and Verse number one, and we'll read down to verse number 13. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them on the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thy own understanding. That's what I call my life verse right there. That's one I've quoted all my life. I've tried to stick by it. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He will direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father his son, in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. Let's pray. God, I do pray you'd meet with us today. Pray you'd give me the words to speak. Give everybody the hearts and the ears to hear. Help us all to learn an important and valuable lesson uh, to help us be better Christians. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, have real faith. A lot of people claim Christianity today, even a lot of preachers, but they don't have the faith that they ought to have. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, we're going to have to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, even when we don't understand. And I, I, I like to admit my own problems. I sometimes feel like maybe I've been a spoiled brat. You know, you get so much from God and you forget to be thankful for what you got and then you have a few problems and you gripe and complain and, and you moan. And like I said, uh, I have some problems with our country here, uh, but I'm still glad I'm here. I'd much, I've been to Russia and a few other countries and when I got back to America, I wanted to kiss the ground when I got back here. I thought, oh man, thank God, thank God for this place that we live. But there's some things I, I'll give you real quick here. First of all, we need to realize this. Our Savior and our salvation is real. There really is a God. There really is a Savior. There really is a salvation. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, it, it's a real thing. Our Savior is real. God saved my soul. Thank God I was, I was only an eight-year-old boy when I gave my heart to Christ. But I, always, I won't take time to tell the whole story of my, but my, my family, I guess at one time was a pretty rough family and my grandpa got saved. And then, uh, it was at a revival meeting and I, I was, this was before I was born even. And then when my, he dragged my dad to church the next day 
and thankfully my dad got saved. And uh, because my, you know, that was after my dad was already married, but, and thankfully they were in church when I was a little boy. And, and uh, thankfully I came to know the Christ as my savior. And God said it's uh, that we read that verse, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding. And I, I say, sometimes I, I'm afraid, I don't know if any of you ever do it, but you ever gripe about stuff and complain? And I think, wait a minute, I look back in my life and uh, I look at, I look back a lot of bad things. And this was a few years ago. Uh, it had been 50 years since I'd been saved. And I went back to the town where I got saved. There was a school I was in back in those days that was real rough and there was things going on. Every day I went to school, I was threatened to get beat up by people. And I was scared to death of that school. And I had an uncle that heard about it and he was a pastor in another town far away, and he let me come stay with him to get me out of that school. And a long story short, there's where that made a difference in my life. Being He was a real godly man I got to be around, and uh, his son was a good friend. He was a good godly young man, and I, that's where I ended up meeting the girl I married. And I said, that was a real blessing to me. And I look back, and I, when I was down in that town, I drove by that school, and I said, thank God for that bad school. Because it had not been for that bad school, I wouldn't have got to go stay with my uncle. Sometimes God uses bad things for a good reason. It has a good, we don't understand it, we don't like it when it's happening, uh, but God's got a reason for everything. And our Savior, He's real, and we've got to trust Him with all of our heart. And every parent here understands this. I think my son will remember this a little bit better. When he was little, I hate to admit it, but he had to get up spanking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But I have a feeling he spanked his kids, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you don't realize it, but even when you're spanking, what I was trying to, I was trying to do was I didn't want him to make some of the same dumb mistakes I made when I was a kid. So I was real strict on my children, and I had rules for them. And our Savior is real, and he really cares for us. Uh, and even get this, God will take care of us. God, our supplier, he's real. We ought to count that blessing. And I, I know maybe we all don't have everything we want in life, but again, God takes care of us. I don't, I don't nobody is starving to death today, right? I mean, God, God takes care of you. Philippians 4.19, the, the Bible says, but my God shall supply all your what? need, not your want, all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I like that song, God will take care of you through every day or all the way. Don't always get what you want, but I, I was talking to my wife the other day about it. I said, you know, back when we first got married, some of the hard times we went through, had we saw what God's given us now, we'd have thought, oh boy, that's really nice. But still we find ourselves sometimes griping and complaining about things. And we got to count our blessings. We got to realize, in fact, everybody here, I don't know if you realize this, the fact that you're able to be here today, that's a blessing. Amen. You were able to get here. And, and thank God, God's gave you this building. This is a, a wonderful blessing that, that God's given to you. And God, He'll supply all of our needs, He'll take care of us. Um, Luke chapter 12, verse 28 through 31 says, If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into uh, the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O ye of little faith. Well, that's a verse we ought to mark in our Bible. O ye of little faith. God takes care of the grass and everything. He's saying he'll take care of us. And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be uh, of a doubtful mind, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after. For our Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. God's saying we ought to understand God's going to supply all of our needs. God's going to take care of us. God's going to see us through. We may have hard times. We may have difficulties. And really, they're good. Again, anybody ever heard the word exercise your faith? Does anybody know exercise, real ex good exercise, it's painful all the time? It's always hard. I said, I know looking at me, you may not believe this, but I can show you 
My family got me this for my birthday a little a year and a half ago. It tells how many steps I take and, and everything a day. And I actually, this morning, I got up and I did a run. I do, I do about five miles of running and, and weightlifting and exercise. And, and <laughs> I think, why is it doing? It, it, it's painful the whole time. And I get hot and I get sweaty and it gets painful. But, but you know, we need to, and why do I need so much exercise? Because I eat too much. <laughs> so I have, I've got the, I've got that problem, and I don't eat. I don't always eat the best stuff either. <laughs> so I said, I don't know if anybody's ever had honey buns, but I've got a honey bun. I love I love honey buns. In fact, I called that company here a while back, and I said, I hate to do this, but I got to make a complaint. And they said, Really? What is it? I said, well, I hope you can take this. I said, But I'm very upset with your company. I said. Uh, you guys make that stuff too good, and I eat way too many of them. And <laughs> they actually liked my complaint <laughs> when, when I got done. I just did it as a joke. But, uh, but God supplies all of our need. God takes care of us. God will see us through. And again, I, I, I don't know, hope my son doesn't bother me saying this. I felt old years ago when I turned 40. I hate to admit that. <laughs> I said, now my son's getting ready to do that. <laughs> I, said, I said, oh my. You know, I said, I, when it happened to me, I said, ooh, man, I hit, I hit 40, you know. <laughs> and you know, now my son's, getting, my son's going to do that real quick. But God will, he'll take care of us. He'll see us through. And God's been real good to me. I said, I feel like I'm one of the most blessed men in the world, honestly. Uh, I'm not just saying that. I've got a wife that loves me. And I've got my children who love me, my grandkids who love me. I said, and they're, so far, all of them have given their heart to the Lord. We're going to get to spend eternity together. Uh, even though I don't have a lot of money, I'm one of the richest people on this earth. And God, God's been so good to me. And God has supplied all of our needs. And we got to see that. And we got to count our blessings. Again, we probably all got something we can gripe about, about maybe our vehicle or our home and different things. Like I said, I, I gripe about this a lot. We, we've got a great big yard, and I have to mow that thing all the time. I said, but, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad I have a big yard. I'm glad I'm in the country. This is a, kind of a joke I tell, but I kind of mean it. I said, it's easy for me to keep God's commandment of love your neighbor. You know why? I don't have any. <laughs> they're, they're all real far away. <laughs> but but uh, that's one nice thing about being out in the country. <laughs> but but I, that's, uh, again, just a joke thing I tell but God God supplies everything we need and I want you to know this this is a reality that we ought to be excited about our spending eternity in heaven that's a real thing heaven's a real place that we're really going to get to go to and get to spend eternity God said in 2 Corinthians 5 8 says we are confident I say and notice this willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord he said, I'm looking forward to that day that I'm absent from this body. Okay, I don't know if you realize this body we're in, this is just our house. The real person's inside here. And one of these days, we're going to be with God in heaven. If I were to die today, I would, I would be in heaven. Absent from the body is what? Present with the Lord. You're with God right, right away. And again, this is, I actually had this dream, but it's kind of a, a joke dream that I think the Lord gave me. I was dreaming that I, I, in my dream I was dying, and then I finally died in my dream. And I found myself in heaven right before the Lord, and I bowed down and thanked God for saving my soul. And he offered me, well, opened the door for me to go into heaven. And as soon as I walked into heaven, I saw my mom knock everybody down and run up and hug me. Because <laughs> I said, I, I look forward to seeing my mom again. And I think she'll be one of the first people I get to see up there in heaven and see my dad again and my brothers again. And I, I'll get to see all my family again in heaven someday. That's going to be a, a wonderful day. And this is something I I preach at nursing homes a lot. And I always tell everybody at the nursing home, and I'll tell everybody here, if God allows it in heaven, uh, I want everybody here to come to my 1,000th birthday because we'll all, we'll all be in heaven by then <laughs> with, the, with the Lord <laughs> uh, up, in, up in heaven. And, it's real, folks. I don't know everything that's going to be going on, but, but it's a real place that we're really going to get to go to, and, and we're, we're, going to, we're going to be there. And, and uh, we need to understand that, and we need to count that. Think about that. What a blessing. I've talked about this. I, I don't like taking airplane rides. They scare me. 
but when I get to the place I'm going, I'm glad that I was on that, that airplane ride. And I'm glad that I took that flight. And, and we need to understand that this life, it, it, gets, it gets tough. Uh, I said years ago, I won't take time to sing and everything, but I wrote a joke. I write songs. I don't know if you all heard that. Some of them have been published, and there's groups that have sang some of my songs. But I wrote a joke song for my mother uh, years ago, and I said, now I'm reaping what I sowed there. It was a joke song. When she turned 70, it was about this old body's getting older. And I, I, if you ever want to hear it someday, I could sing it to you. But, but it was a joke song. I said, now everything I sang to her is happening to me. You know, <laughs> I said, but, but I'm glad that uh, we're going to spend eternity in heaven. We're going to be with the Lord. And, and God said that absent from the body is present with the Lord. Philippians 1.20 says, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ. And notice the next phrase. And to die is what? Gain. To die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I sh shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart, uh, and to be with Christ, notice that next phrase, which is far better. It's going to be a lot better when we, when we get to heaven. It's going, to, it's going to be a better place when we get there. And so understand, spending eternity is real. Again, I don't know everything that we're going to be doing while we're, you know, I, I think about that sometimes, you know, a million years from now, what are we going to be doing? You know, what's God, be? I don't know. But I know we'll still, still be alive, we'll still be enjoying things in heaven. We're going to have a wonderful eternity uh, with God, and, and we need to see this real. And if you're here today and you've never got saved, you need to understand eternity is real, okay? Because hell is a real place. That's got to be horrifying. You don't want to go there. And I remember when I was, a, I was a little young boy, I was sitting in church like this, and I heard that preaching, and I was scared to death. I used to sit back toward the back and and I, I didn't want to go down the aisle, so I kept scooting up. And then finally, I walked forward down and went to give my heart to the Lord. And unfortunately, that preacher didn't see me uh, <laughs> come forward. But thankfully, somebody else did. And before the service, uh, when the ser service was over, the preacher came back and said, Tommy, why'd you come? I said, I, didn't want, I don't want to go to hell. I'm scared. And, and he told me about salvation. And I got saved. And I thank God uh, that I'm uh, going to spend eternity in heaven and and it might be scary, but if you've never been saved, you know when you ought to get saved? Right now. Right now. You don't even have to wait uh, for the end of the service. You ought to pray right now and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. And mean that with all of your heart because uh, eternity is real. I can't, I, I've, I can't imagine an eternity in hell. That's got to be horrible. I said... Uh, here a while back, I, I was burning a bunch of stuff at my house. We had a bunch of trees got blown over with the, and I was out there and when I lit that thing on fire and I was standing close to it and it was so hot, I thought, oh mercy. Just if hell only lasted five minutes, I wouldn't want to go to hell. I'm serious. And there's people that live their life on this earth and they're thinking just about this. What does the Bible say about it? In this life only, we have hope. We're going to be of all men, what? Most miserable. And I'll tell you what, you, if I, and I mean this with my whole heart, if I could be the richest man on earth, but it was going to cost me my soul, I wouldn't want it. So back when I was a real young guy, I hate to admit this, but I was a big Elvis Presley fan. Why did I like him so much? Because all the girls liked him. <laughs> and I was wanting that. And in fact, I, when I was a young guy, I tried to look like him as much as, much as I could. <laughs> I tried to wear my hair like he did and stuff. And, but, uh, but, you know, and I, I thank God for this. I did hear that he gave his heart to the Lord before he died. I knew a preacher that talked to him and said that he prayed. And I'm glad for that. But then I think I wonder about his family now. See, he might have had all the fame there for a while, but if he's in heaven and his daughter's not saved, and his grandkids aren't saved. I don't know that, but uh, if that's not true, I said, that, that'd be horrifying to me. And, and I would much rather than have all the fame on this earth, I'd rather have 
not only myself in heaven, oh, I'm glad. That's why I said I was real strict on my kids. And uh, why? Because I wanted them to make sure they had a good life and that they I didn't want to make the same dumb mistakes that I did. And I wanted them to do right. And then I wanted their kids to get saved. And I want the uh, my, my great grandkids, whenever I start getting them, I want them uh, to be saved. And if the Lord tarries is coming and it's a thousand years before he comes or something, uh, if there's, I, uh, there's a Tommy number three, I don't know if my Tommy number three is going to name his son Tommy or not, but uh, if he does, I, I want to see Tommy four in heaven and I want to see Tommy five in heaven and Tommy six in heaven and, and on and on I can go. I want to see them. The Bible says, what does the Bible say happens in heaven when a sinner repents? There's rejoicing in heaven. And again, I don't know this, but I've tried to imagine stuff about that. If there's people in heaven that have family that's here right now that's not saved, they're probably watching thinking, boy, I hope they get saved. And if they get saved, whoa, they were going to rejoice. They're going to be excited when they you get saved. So if you're not saved, you ought to get saved. And our, our salvation uh, and spending eternity in heaven is a real thing. And again, seeing our loved ones in heaven, that's real. One of these days, we, we, the Bible says we'll be caught up together to meet the Lord in there. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. He says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Notice that, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. It doesn't say we can't sorrow, but we don't sorrow differently. Again, I, I was sad when I did my mom's funeral. I was sad when I did my dad's funeral. I was sad when I did my brother's funeral. Those are sad days, but I had hope because I know I'm going to get to see him again. So we sorrow differently, not as those who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus and will God bring with him. For we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together, notice this, with them, to meet the Lord in the air. Caught up together with them. I always say, so if the rapture were to come right now, guess which way I'm going to fly? Most of my family is buried down south, so I'm going to fly that way. <laughs> because, because we're going to be caught up together with them uh, to meet the Lord uh, in the air, and it's going to be a wonderful day here. A while back, I was down at a funeral down in Missouri. Uh, had family, uh, the family that passed away, and I went down. That's where my mom and dad are buried. My grandma, and my grandpa, my brother are there. And I walked by, and I, I was thinking, you know, it'd be a great day for the Lord to come, because you know, mom and dad they'd come up first, and I'd get to go up right there with them to meet the Lord. And and folks, you know, again. We're supposed to have faith. We're supposed to really believe. And I hope everybody really believes in the rapture, okay, and the coming of the Lord. I hope you believe heaven's a real place that we're really going to get to go to. I don't know when, but we know it's going to happen. And again, this is a, I was telling somebody else a joke today that I, I tell, and I, I say it's a joke, but I kind of mean it too. I told my wife, I said, the Bible says, wives, obey your husband. I said, you're not allowed to die before me. Okay. I said, if you do die before me, I'll kill you. <laughs> but just, but uh, you know, I, I, I worry sometimes about how I'm going to go and things of that nature. But I don't worry about the fact I'm going to go. I just want to be there first. This is another joke I told somebody here. I said, I want to go there first because if I get there first, I'll have God build my wife's mansion right next to mine. If she goes first, she'll probably have mine on the other side of heaven. <laughs> you ladies understand, right? <laughs> but, uh, but anyhow, uh, our seeing the Lord, loved ones again, it's real. I'll get to see my dad again. I'll get to see my mom again. I'll get to see my grandparents again. Why? Because they gave their heart to the Lord uh, years ago. And I, I'm glad that, that I'm going to get to see them. And I want to, I you know, again, as a father... My main concern was I wanted more than anything. I wanted a lot of things for my kids, but I wanted to make sure they gave their heart to the Lord. That was the most important thing in this world uh, to me. 
If it was going to cost the life of one of my kids, I wouldn't take a hundred million dollars. Amen. I, that's how much I love my family and how much I love my grandkids. I want to see them all in heaven. Uh, this is something that should be real. I don't know if it is real, but our service to God should be real. Okay, are we really serving the Lord? The Bible said in Psalms 100, verse number 1 through 5, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Notice this next phrase. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endureth to all generations. Make a joyful noise. We ought to, we ought to serve the Lord with gladness. I hope none of you have, if you, you need to repent if you did this, you thought, oh, I have to go to church today. You ought to serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. You ought to be thrilled that you get to go to the house of God. You ought to be thrilled that you have a Bible that, that you can read. Amen. You ought to be thrilled that you have a chance that, that you could win somebody to the Lord. Uh, the greatest reward that we can have in heaven is other people there with us. Amen. I, said, no, I, I think it's always good. I, I got some of these little tracks that I can I carry around with me. I, I want to always try to at least try to win somebody to Christ. I want to try to share the gospel with them, and, and uh, we ought to serve the Lord. And again, I hate to admit this, when I first surrendered to preach, I thought I was doing God a favor. I hate to admit that. Okay, but I was a teenage, I was a 17-year-old boy, and I felt like God was calling me to preach. And this is a true story. I'll tell it to you. I was sitting in that church, and we had a guest speaker at our church, and, and something in my heart says, Tom, you need to surrender your life to the Lord. I, I didn't want to. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't want to. And I sat there in the pew, and they were given the invitation, and, and I just kept feeling like God was calling me, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it. And uh, they finally stopped the, the invitation, and Pastor Graham, he was the pastor. They had a guest speaker. He stood up. He said, we're going to dismiss our service now. And I thought, ooh. And I prayed a weird prayer. I said, God, if you really want me, you have them do one more verse of invitation for me. And this is a true story. And my, my uncle, he called on somebody to pray, and they started praying. And I thought, Phew. And all of a sudden, he said, wait, stop. He said, God just told me we need to have one more verse of invitation. Somebody needs to make a decision. And I literally, I ran to that altar. And I, I, said, I said, okay, God, I surrender. I hate to admit it, I was surrendering. And this was a blessing. I'm not bragging, but this is God used this for me. And the guest speaker, I'd never met him before, and he got up and he said, I don't know if Tom knows this or not, but when he was a baby, his mom brought him to my office and asked me to pray that, I, that someday God would use him. And that was in a town hundreds of miles away. I'd never met this man. He was my mom's pastor when I was a baby. And I thought, woo, I'm not bragging. I'm just, I'm just saying God was admitting to me that he called me uh, to preach, and, and I, I hate to admit that's not what I wanted to do at that time. But God, I surrendered to the Lord. Now I look back and I think, wow, I used to think I was doing God a favor. Now I know it's a miracle. God was even willing to put up with me. Amen. I'm serious. God's, I always said the last song I want them to sing at my funeral, and I mean this, is God's been good in my life. Y'all know that song? God's been good in my life, and he really has. God's, God's been so good, and knowing what I know now, even if I had to be the poorest man on earth, I'd rather have God in my life than to have all the money of this world and all the fame of this world. When I was a young person, of course, you had some of those dreams. And, but, uh, and so God, I, God let me serve him. And you ladies are probably like this, and I truly mean this. When I first got married, I thought, well, I'm doing that girl a favor, marrying her. But now I know it's a miracle she's even put up with me. <laughs> And I say this, I said, any reward God gives me in heaven, she's going to get ten times as much for putting up with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and, and I actually believe that. <laughs> that and I always tell this as a joke. Brother Ken Graham, he's my cousin. I, uh, he married the sister of the girl I married. 
I said, I told Ken, I said, you know, we were good, godly young men. Look at the wonderful wives God gave us. I said, but they must have been pretty wicked. Look what they got stuck with. <laughs> but, yeah, we, ought to, we ought to serve the Lord with, with gladness. And what the Bible says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Have a good spirit, a good attitude. You know, again, I think all of us have this problem. We come, a lot of people come to church and quit church. You know why? They're not getting what they want. It's not for you. God said, look not every man on his own things. But ever, think about other people. Again, I thank God for, I know we, I don't like to get pulled over by a policeman, but I'm glad that there are policemen out there to protect us. Amen. I'm glad they're there uh, to, to watch over us and, I don't like going to doctors, but I'm glad there are doctors who know how to work on us when we need it and do things for us. And folks, we ought to be glad that we have a church that we can come to and spend time with uh, the Lord and each other. And there will be bad days. All you ladies who are married, uh, remember when you got married, for better, what was the next line? For worse. For, worse. <laughs> for richer, for poorer, in sickness and health. In poverty or wealth. Why did we say that when we marry people? Because there's going to be good days. There's going to be bad days. But you know what? Real love is going to keep you going and keep you faithful. And if we really love God, we're going to stay faithful to him. We're going to stay true to him. And we're going to serve him uh, in, in, in reality and, and serving with a good spirit. Another thing, uh, our separation from this world ought to be real. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Notice that next phrase. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Notice that. Ye are the temple of the living God. Uh, and God has said, I will dwell in them, will walk in them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. God said that we ought to separate from this world. We ought to be different from this world. What would you think of this church if... if uh, you came here on Sunday, but then on Monday they turned it into a bar. Then Wednesday it was a church again. Then uh, you wouldn't want to keep going to a place like that, would you? I don't know if you got, you can actually go on YouTube and see what I call my first job as pastor at the church I, I was at down there. Is uh, we bought an old building that was a bar, and we were turning it into a church. And my first job as pastor, I got up and I ripped down the cold beer sign. I got rid of those, and I, I, I made a, we want, had to, we took a chainsaw and sawed out the bar, and got, we had to make a lot of changes in that building, uh, because, you know, now you go into it, you'd never know that it was a bar if I didn't tell you that it was a bar, and, you know, God allowed us to build some new buildings and, and everything, and, uh, you know, I, I did a, I can't remember all the words, but I said, I did a poem about it, if these walls could talk, you know, the thing, if I think they would say that things for them are much happier today. And uh, folks, separation uh, from this world isn't to make us miserable. It's it's to keep us uh, good and happy and clean. I'm glad uh, that God separated uh, me from my uh, this world. When I first got engaged, I got a job as an assistant pastor all the way out in Washington State. Okay, that was a long ways away from my wife to be. But you know what? Even though we were thousands of miles apart, I still didn't want her dating other people. You know, she was my fiance, and I didn't want to date anybody else while I was there because I, I, I'd made a commitment uh, to her, and I wanted to separate uh, my, myself from everything else. And we as Christians ought to want to separate ourselves from this world. God said not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And boy, we could get into a lot of stuff there, but this is a world now where you older folks will remember this. There was a time when television, even back in art, when we were young, they had rules. They weren't allowed to cuss. Things like that. Now there's so much garbage that you can see on television, and now you can 
do things on computers. And I always say, had I had access to what kids do these days, I'd, that scares me because it's, it's a very dangerous world we're living in. It really is. I'm not making fun. I'm feeling sorry for them. Again, how would you all feel today if all these little children, if I were to give them all a semi-automatic gun to play with? It's not wrong to have a gun, but do you think all the kids ought to have one to play with? No. <laughs> okay, and I'm saying we're living in a very dangerous world today because people have access uh, to so much stuff, and, and God said to come out from among them and be what? Separate. It's not that we're trying to be Mr. Perfect. We're just trying to avoid things that are, are going to create problems. Again, I, I hate to admit this story, but when I was a real young kid, I, was, I lived there in that, that town. I was walking down the street, and I saw a movie back in those days, of a, a movie state uh, place, but it was an a X-rated movie. And you, had, you know you had to be 21 to go back in those days? You had to be 21 to go into a place like that? And I had this thought in my head. I thought about it. I ought to sneak in there. I hate to admit that. I was just a little kid. And I, I thought about that. But thankfully, they didn't let me. Okay? They, didn't let, they had rules back in those days. Had I been able to sneak in there, there's no telling what I might have saw or what I'd done uh, in something like that. And that's why you all have got to be real careful what your kids get involved in today, and especially in this world, because it's a, it's a very wicked world. And you kids... You know, I don't want to scare you, but you don't, you don't want to hate, I don't hope that guy don't get my parents to do that. You ought to, you ought to be strict on yourselves because one of these days you'll be glad that you stay separated from this world. Come out from among them. Okay. What would you think of, about me if, if, you, if you went by a bar and you saw me sitting in there and everybody's drinking, but I wasn't drinking, but I'm sitting there with all those people drinking? Not going to look good, huh? God said, come out from among them. Be separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. And I'll give you one more thing here. Look at Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Our sharing our faith with other people ought to be real. We ought to be sharing our faith with other people. Again, if, if you had a horror, let's say you had cancer and you were about to die. And I came by and I, I had a pill and I gave you that pill and you took that pill and boom, you were healthy all of a sudden. That'd be exciting. And if I gave you a hundred more pills, what kind of person would you be if you knew somebody else who had cancer and you didn't give it to them? That'd be pretty rotten, wouldn't it? Pretty rotten. And what I'm trying to say is God gave us salvation. Are you saved today? Do you know Christ is your Savior? You know what? You ought to want other people to have that. Amen. Like I said, I, I didn't get to see it. I'm hoping God will let me look back and see it. I talked about my grandpa I, that I'd never met. He died before I was born, but he got saved. And the first thing he did, he went, <laughs> he literally, they, they told me he literally dragged my dad. Even though he was already married, he got him to go to church with him. They were having a revival meeting. <laughs> and thankfully, my dad got saved. And I'm glad my grandpa did that. Because you know what? My dad... He took me to church every Sunday of my life. And when I was that little boy, I got to hear that, that preaching, and I got, I got saved. And, and I'm not bragging on me. I'm still bragging on my grandpa cause, because my dad got saved, and then he let, got me to go to church, and I got saved. And thank God my son got saved. And thank God all my grandkids have given their heart to the Lord, haven't they? They better have. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's the greatest reward you can have in your heaven is your, is your family with you in heaven someday and if i said if i have great grandkids i want to see them in heaven someday and even after i'm gone if the lord tarries and i'm gone a thousand years from now if there's still mcmurtry's around I, I want to see them in heaven someday and folks that's why we we need to god what that song we sang when upon life's billows you are tempest tossed do not be discouraged okay folks we ought to if you're here today and you're saved you ought to be excited let me say this. If you're not saved, you ought to be excited. You know why? Because you can get saved right now. You can give your heart to Jesus right now. And you know what? When you leave this place, you ought to think about your family. They might get mad at you, but you ought to go to them and say, hey, you really need to know about the Lord. You need to know that, and I, I don't know for sure, but I believe we're getting close to the, I hope we're getting close to the end of time because this 
I always said this world is going downhill real fast now. It's scary how downhill it's going, but our, our sharing our faith with others should be real. Like I said, I may not, there's a lot of things I may not be able to do, but I can, I can always hand out somebody a track and, and say, hey, listen, if you get a chance, read that. If you get a chance, if you ever need to talk to me, come say, do, you know, we're going to, they're, they're not letting us go into houses and stuff a lot, but uh, our, I like what our pastors, he's got these things, we're, we're going to go around hanging stuff on doors all over, at least try to leave them uh, a track. And if I get a chance to talk to anybody, uh, I, I will talk to them as much as I can. So sharing our faith with others. God said in Matthew 28, 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. God said, I'm going to be with you forever. And I want you to go. And I want you to listen. You may not be a great witness, but again, if let, let's say, let's see what time? I'm, I'm about ready to quit, folks. Okay, ooh, time to quit. 10, 1044. Okay. What if, what if uh, I went home today and somebody had accused me of murdering somebody at 1044? Okay. What kind of people would you be if you wouldn't witness say, wait a minute, he was at our church at that time. Okay. You ought to be willing to do that and be a, and say, you know, and folks, we ought to be a witness for our Lord, that he loved people. He gave his life for people. We ought to share that with people. So remember, Satan is a deceiver, and we need to understand that the devil that, what, was cast in the lake of fire, that deceived them, was cast in the lake of fire. And I want you to know this, too. Our world is a deceiver. This world is a deceptive world. But our God and his word, it's real. We should do our best to have real faith, uh, in God and in his word, and we ought to have good enough faith that we can share it with other people.